Namaste. Welcome my yogis. It's Mary Jane Kasliner and this week for our yoga practice I am going to focus on yin style and I just want to discuss the difference between the two types of practices. Normally I am a vinyasa flow teacher which is more yang style but I'm also certified in yin practice. And the difference between the two is as follows. First of all, in our yang practice, we're essentially moving the body more and we're working with the um, larger muscles of the body. Okay, we're working more on an approach where the uh, parts of the body are more um, surface, if you will. And the muscles are more flexible, they're more pliable because they are basically made up of water. When we work with yin style yoga, the aim is to get into the deeper aspects of the body, such as the ligaments, the connective tissue, and the fascia. Now, the deeper tissues are not as elastic or pliable, simply because there's not as much water there. So especially as we age, these areas of our body, the deeper tissues, can become very plastic. And that is what adds to that feeling of being stiff, or the joints feeling like they're immobile. So with the yin practice, the way we get to these deeper tissues is through a pulling and a compressing motion. How do we do that? Well, essentially when we come into an asana or a pose, we invite the body to take the shape of the pose. And when it takes the shape of the pose, there is another invitation to allow gravity to bring you to a sustainable edge of the pose. Sustainable meaning that you can stay there without necessarily using muscle engagement gripping sensation or forcing sensation. You're going to stay there for time. So the element of time becomes a factor in yin practice. The idea is that for the deeper tissues to become more pliable and um, accept more water or fluid in the area is the duration of time that we stay in the pose. So at minimum, we need three minutes. And essentially today I'll be timing, um, this is what my iPad is here for, uh, be timing the poses for us, okay? And just the yin poses. The, the couple of yang poses we take a little not time, we'll just come into the breath essentially. So one of the most challenging aspects to yin yoga, in my opinion, is to surrender to stillness, okay? Accepting that once your body takes the shape of the pose, you surrender into a state of stillness. This is extremely challenging because the mind, the manamaya kosha, begins to become very active, right? Just think about it when it's really quiet, you're inactive, usually the mind gets very active. And so there's going to be a temptation from the mind to begin to move. Well, gee, if I just move my shoulder here, I'll feel better and what have you. So this becomes a challenge to um, negate that and stay still. And the other challenge is to stay for time. Uh, again, the mind will begin to challenge you. So the idea is to come back to the breath, maybe deepen the breath, maybe widen the breath, maybe soften the breath and to continually let go. So it's, this is truly a practice of surrender. So we have a few props here. If you have blocks, that'll be fantastic. If you don't have blocks, go ahead and use books. Um, blanket, pillow, uh, towel, all works. This is not restorative yoga, it is yin yoga. So I don't want you to use props just for the sake of using them. Only use them when you absolutely need it, okay? And you will know the best, so you always trust the inner guru, okay? So with that being said, we're in our Sukhasana position here. And let's just begin to 
draw the energy inward so we can begin to come into the present moment and spend this next 60 minutes or so as a time of practice and an inner quietude. So I like to always begin to soften through the face, gazing through the temples and along the forehead, and perhaps just inviting the eyelids to float down over the physical eyes. Right. And as soon as you do that, you may notice that the torso of the body may be leaning forward. So gently tuck the chin ever so slightly towards the sternum, the chest bone, just slightly. And that should begin to bring the torso back. There you go. And then feel the weight of your physical body, the Anamaya Kosha. And just invite the weight to drape down over the auric body, right? your energy body. You might feel a softening of the knees towards the earth, the rooting of the sitting bones, the ischial tuberosity, into the earth. Right. And begin to take notice Take notice of the parts of your body that are in contact with the surface beneath you. And perhaps notice the parts of your body that are not in contact with the surface beneath you. And then come to realize that there is a thin layer of skin that separates your body to that of the earth, that which is not your body. Bring awareness to the base of your spine and through the in-breath, pull the energy of the earth, yin energy, receptive, open to receive, liberating current, upward. Through the Shushumna Nadi, the main channel, this is your power source. Right? And as you pull that energy up, see it filling as a tube of energy. Maybe there is a color that you have attached to this energy. Maybe a green color to represent the energy the element of wood, vitality, and growth. And it's very much associated with this springtime, blossoming, growing. And then begin to concentrate on your exhalations. And through the exhalation, tap into the energy of the central tube begin to pull that color, that energy, that source of life to the edges of your body, the periphery. And as you pull it to the periphery, the edges of your body, you'll begin to notice automatically the rib cage will expand. And as your rib cage expands, the lungs find freedom, more depth with each breath. And through that depth of the breath, 
we begin to tap into the working phase of the lung. And I'll use the lung parenchyma. And there's these little tiny sacs. Just imagine them. They're all these little tiny air sacs. And this is where the gas exchange occurs. O2 and CO2. And so you really want to bring that prana, fill up all those alveoli, is what they're called, these little tiny sacs. So through the beat of the heart, we can take these oxygenated cells and send them throughout the body. Trillions of cells. Yeah. And then notice with each breath, the energy of pulling it up from there is very receptive. And as you exhale, expanding it, expanding it, the edges of your body, rib cage opening, collarbones opening. And as the collarbones open, notice how the tops of the shoulders can soften. And scapula moving down. Behind the heart, and taking the wings of your sati, letting them rest on top of the kidneys, the powerhouse, the jing. And right at the top of the kidneys, in these little glands called the adrenals, let's flow some chi into that with prana. The adrenals are so important. Because this is what brings about the hormones in the body. Can't live without them. So continue to breathe here, lengthening, expanding, and taking that internal journey, exploration. In the month of April, I have a trigram in Feng Shui known as Shung, who's very active. Shun is the female trigram. Trigram meaning tri, three lines. Heaven, man, earth. So between the heavenly realm and the earthly realm. We sit right between the two. So we're infused by both of these energies. Pure chi, pure potentiality, heavenly dawn, and earthly matter, physical matter. The earthly realm. And so Shun representing not only female energy in our life, it is our fortunate blessing. You know? And so that can be represented by many things, whether it's family or physical object, material object, our home, our wealth. In nature, it's represented by the wind. So the wind is changeable, right? We can't see it. We feel it. We know it's there. It corresponds to our spirit. We can't see it, but we can feel it. We know it's there. So for a moment, I'd like to read to you a verse from the Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 6 about the wind. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning to its course. Hmm. So sometimes you may feel as though you are going round and round and round. But realize that the wind, like your spirit, will return back to its course. The next time the wind blows, listen. Listen to the wind. Because it's the whispers of your soul. Hmm. Put our hands over the heart space and the upper chakra. As you bow in, chin towards the heart, opening up cervical spine. Set your intention for your practice. So what will you practice?
And we'll go ahead and open our practice with the sound of OM. Deep breath in. The eyes will gently open. Let's take our hands onto our knees and let's just loosen up the mid body with some Sufi circles. So nice and slow, we'll take it clockwise. Exhalation, the heart sinking towards the soil of the earth. And on the inhalation, let's just open it up to the pure chi of all. Exhale, keep things down. Inhale, we bring it open. Exhale, bring it down. Inhale, open it up, rise up, soften the shoulders, lift up through the back of the skull, broaden the base of the skull. And then let's take that counter spin moving in a counterclockwise motion, opening it up, and dissolving it back down. And one more time, open everything up, and exhale, release it back down. Inhale, rise up, right through the crown of the head. Shush, shush. Good. We're going to make our way into our first pose, which is going to be butterfly pose, Baddha Konasana. We're going to draw the soles of the feet together. Now, a few options here. If you'd like, you can take your blanket, you can roll it, you can place it underneath, right? The Shilatubrosities or the sitting bones. Come to the edge there. That'll help with the forward tilt of the pelvic. If your knees have any type of sensitivity, you can use blocks or books underneath for a little support, but only if you truly have sensitivity in your knees. Otherwise, I'd say take them away. Okay. And so we're going to come into this pose by exhaling and rounding the spine and just come forward and bow in. So you're going to begin to find softness here. And in this pose of Baddha Konasana, it's fantastic for increasing the range of motion for the hips. And the hips are a large ball and socket joint. And as we age, this is one of the prime areas that may give you trouble. So here there is a deep flexion, right? There's also the spine, get some flexibility in this pose. And we also activate all of the major meridians in the body, especially the urinary bladder. And there's a big opening to the back body here, especially into the kidneys. And the kidneys in Chinese medicine is the powerhouse. It's the gin. It's really a true life source. And so begin to breathe through the kidneys. It's also a place that represents our ancestors world traditions, our connection to humanity, our dreams. And the butterfly itself, in terms of its symbolism, is a metamorphosis, right? So it's a personal transformation. Continue to soften, continue to invite gravity, continue to surrender to the stillness. Notice where the mind is. Continue to use your breath to soften the waves of the mind. Soften the waves of the body. The waves of the ocean. Perhaps seeing them come into a state of stillness. Feeling the groin beginning to Soften and open. Releasing even more. Surrendering even more into the pose. Deep flexion in the hips. The thinning of the cliches. The impressions. Emotional hurts that lie deep, deep, deep. 
transfer many life lines. Not just a holding back. And so can you surrender to it? Can you let it rise up? Like the next wave in the ocean. A few more breaths here. Soften. Release it. And go ahead and take a deep breath in. Surrender the breath out. On your next in breath, and go ahead and gently walk the hands towards your body and lengthen up through the crown of the head. If you have a blanket underneath, your sitting bones gently remove it. And then with the strength of your hands, you're going to pull up those knees right, and extend the right leg out and the left. And come back onto your forearms. This is a hand pose. And just go ahead and kind of wave your feet from side to side here. And perhaps notice the energy moving through the hip points now hip flexors as a result of the butterfly pose. And then gently coming down onto your back and bend your knees, soles of the feet to the earth, and then lift your left and your right leg up. Lift up your head and gaze towards the belly or the hara. And then as you exhale, slowly lowering both legs towards the earth. And then rise all the way up. So a little Manipura Chakra opening and building a fire of Agni. Prayer comes through the heart space and we have the chakra. And we're going to go ahead and pull the right knee into our chest and soften the sole of the right foot into the inner seam of the left leg here. So in yang practices of Janu Shishasana, head to knee pose, in yin it's called calf dragon fly. Good. So again, if you need the blanket underneath the sitting bones for an assist for the pelvic tube forward movement, you can. If your hamstrings are really, really tight, you can soften the left knee and roll your towel or blanket under it. So again, using your props wisely. If you don't need them, I wouldn't use them. This way we can really get the pulling and the compressing to excite the hyaluronic acid to draw more water into these deeper tissues. Good. On your exhalation, again, just allow the spine to round out as you bring the heart towards the earth and bow in, tuck in, and surrender. And so here in this pose of half dragonfly, there are several actions occurring. Again, we're increasing the range of motion through the hips. We're also creating flexibility in the spine. There's an inner groin that is stretching here. We're also getting a stretch through the hamstring. So several meridians are also opening here. Let go of the muscle. Right? So the urinary bladder Nice channel through the back of that left leg. And bringing nice source of chi through there. And we also might feel a conversation through the outer left hip or the outer right hip. And that will be the gallbladder channel. Right? So it's wood chi. And so here we have a beautiful what we call shang cycle of the water chi fueling to the wood. So there's growth. Think of the outside rain coming down so the plants can grow. Soften the breath. And see if you can ease any tension in your jaw. So create a little space between the upper and the lower teeth. Soften between the third eye and the jaw. Ease through the back of the skull. And if your third eye is tapping towards the left shin, then perhaps an energy from the third eye through to the fourth eye, the back of the skull. Can you take the breath through the sole of the left foot and bring it up through the back of the left leg? 
And on the exhalation, easy to cross the lumbar spine. And let it roll to the outside of the right hip, over the right quad, down the right knee, and through the right shin, and soften through the sole of the right foot, and through the inner seam of the left leg. Feel a rolling sensation of the pelvis. Letting go of any muscle engagement here. So maybe softening, letting the foot just soften here. Continuing to breathe. Right. Action of the breath. Soften the waves of the mind that may be telling you to come out of the pose. Staying for a few more breaths here. Inhaling and exhaling. And take a nice deep breath in. And sigh the breath out. On your next in breath, you'll go ahead and lift the torso and gently walking the hands towards your body. For a moment, just feel the length of the shishulna and the tailbone through the crown. And take a gentle twist to your left. Just soften, soften the left shoulder down and come into the spirals. So the spirals rising from the tailbone, right, intertwining through the shishona, the spine, up through the crown. And gently release, coming back forward. We'll lengthen out the right leg here. And we'll hug in the left knee towards the chest, soften the sole of the left foot, inner seam, right leg. Pull back the fleshy part underneath the right sitting bone. Again, using any props as you feel you need them. Right? And if you don't need them, let the weight of gravity do the work here. So on your exhalation, go ahead and take that gentle walk forward, rounding the spine and then soften. Come into that stillness of the body and accept the shape of the pose. And come to sit. Notice where you might need to soften, release. And come back to your breath. Just pull the breath through the sole of the right foot. Let it ride the wave, a gentle stream of energy, just a gentle lapping of the waves up through the back of the left leg. And as you exhale, sweep it across the lumbar spine, soften through the outer left hip, down the left quad, over the left kneecap. Let it flow like a gentle river down the left shin. Mm. through the sole of the left foot, and then let it ride through the inner seam of the right leg, activating the liver, the kidney, the spleen. Right? And so we have some action of the elements flowing. The kidneys are watery chi, right? fueling the wood of the liver. Well, all of this is embedded into the earth, Spleen, right? The spleen that filters our blood, breathing in, breathing out. Breathe through the kidneys, make that connection. What are your dreams? Is it part of your life journey? Notice where you can widen the breath, and notice where you can. Totally surrender. Feeling just gentle shift, deeper layers of the body, the mind. Getting past the, the busy mind of the Manamaya Kosha and maybe delving closer into the Vijnana Maya Kosha. Right? Discernment. Releasing the judgment, the judgment of the pose. The judgment of the shape of your body. Just moving with the ebb and flow of the energy of your knee, the energy of your spirit, the whispers. Be with that. 
Inhale. And take a deep breath in. Soften the breath out. On your next in-breath, lift your gaze to the horizon. Check it and walk your hands towards your body, lengthening through the shishuma. And then lengthen out the left leg. And we'll go ahead and come down onto our forearms again. Come back to the hammock. And just allow the feet to flow. Move them a little bit. Notice how the energy, maybe a tingling sensation in the body as a result of your half dragonflies and coming down onto your back, release, bend your knees, soles of the feet to the earth. Let's lift up left and the right leg. Good. Lifting your head, gaze towards Bahada. Exhale, legs will slowly lower towards Pachimama. And then lifting your eyes, yeah, Manipuri Chakra. Transformation change, prayer into the heart space, Anyata Chakra. And we're going to gently open up the legs into a full dragonfly here. So if the hamstrings are really tight, you can actually bend the knees fully, soles of the feet to the earth, and then you'll just gently round the spine. Your next option is to keep the knees slightly flexed, your book, your blanket, your towels can support underneath. Good. And then your third option is to go ahead and take a full length of your legs here. Again, you can use your blanket, your towel, your pillow to prop underneath the edge of the ischial tuberosities or your sitting bones. Good. So on your exhalation, we're going to gently just begin to round the spine, coming forward. Maybe you want to stay up onto your forearms and maybe your elbows. Maybe you'll create a double fist pillow for the third eye to rest on and just dissolve in this pose. So again, begin to find the freedom, the yin aspect of it. So notice where you're clenching, notice where you're holding on in this pose. This is a deep, deep flexion through the hips. Yeah, so a thinning of the cliches again, a thinning out of those impressions. We can begin to dissolve them. And we're going to move with the Nodi Shudna breath, alternate breath, through the legs. Good. So just exhale fully. And we're going to inhale and pull the chi through the sole of the left foot. And let's ride the wave through the inner seam of the left leg. So you can really plug into those three meridians, the water of the kidney, fueling the wood of the liver, and everything embeds into the earth with the roots air down of the spleen. And through the exhalation, we'll exhale out through the inner seam of the right leg, out through the sole of the right foot. Good. Remain in your stillness. Remain in your breath. Inhale through the sole of the right foot, inner seam of the right leg. Exhale out through the inner seam of the left leg and out through the sole of the left foot. So go ahead and continue with your alternate breath through the legs, feeling the breath also moving to the back of the kidney, feeling the spine becoming more fluid, length. And the dragonfly is also a sign of change, transformation, and life. A lot of these poses representing a metamorphosis, a change, a transformation. We spoke about this in my previous classes. Out of the shadow into the light. It shifts. And it softens the edges of your mind, the edges of your body, the edges of your lower breath, the Padamaya Kosha, breathing into the earth and accepting the energy of the earth. Deep breath in. And soften the breath out. On your next in-breath, gently lifting the torso from the earth, 
walking the hands towards your body, lengthening through the Shushumna, pause. Feel that sensation, yeah. Really opening through those hip creases. Using the strength of your hands, you'll lift up under the knees. Let's just take a pause here. Take a breath in and soften the breath out. Beautiful. Swing back around here, lengthening the legs. And let's go ahead and come back down onto our forearms. Take a brief moment in your hammock position. Good. And then gently coming back down onto your back. And this time we're going to hug the knees in and just take a little sacral rock side to side. And the right ankle over the left. And let's go ahead and rock front to back. So we really begin to activate the spinal fluid and then coming up into your pose of ease for a moment. Breath in and soften the breath out. And let's just take a little twist to your right this time. This way we get in a twist to the right side. If we had our twist to the left in our half dragon fly earlier. Come back into the fire. And then gently come back forward. So from here, we're going to uncross the ankles. We're going to come into our tabletop. Yeah? And we're going to come into some cat cows. So we're really going to move the waters here of Vashtisthana, our navel chakra. So let's inhale, tip the head. Exhale, tuck the toes, pull the heart through the gate. Sink the belly towards the earth. The container that is holding the waters. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, two more in breath, out breath, one more inhale, and exhale. Taking your hands a little bit in front, yeah? and we're going to tuck the toes, lift the knees two inches from the earth. So we're going to get into a little bit of yang here, and then go ahead and Bend your hips up, downward facing dog, keeping the knees pretty bent here. Shift the hips out of the dark into the light. So the weight of matter of the hips become lighter now as we send the energy of the lower chakras to move up into the heart, the gateway. The bird opens and flies upward. Good. And then begin to alternate. The right heel comes down. And then it lifts up with the left plunge down. So we're taking our dog out for a walk, being very mindful that we're on the radial side and the neck and crown side. As the forearms move in, the upper arm bones externally rotate and move into the shoulder sockets. And we widen across the back of the heart. Scapula widening. Good. Soften. Beautiful. We're going to inhale, float to our plank. Hold up the earth, exhale, double knee tap, shift the chin way out in front, eight point inchworm. And inhale, glide the body forward, exhale, push away the earth. Low cobra bhujangasana. A big stomach channel here. Exhale, bring your knees down. Send it away, kick the heels, child's pose, soften the armpits, heart meridian awakens. Deep flexion in the hips. Increase that range of motion. Inhale, lift your gaze, gaze to the horizon. Drop past through your tabletop, hips are high, downward facing dog. Lift your gaze, the right foot's going to step through between your hands. Let's lower out the left knee. Now, you can take your blocks here or your books and place them either side of the right foot. Then your hands can come onto those blocks. Keep the wrists and the shoulders in alignment here. We're going to come into our dragon pose. So the dragon is part of the energy of the month of April in feng shui astrology. And so they move, the dragons move through the wind, the wind, the energy of shung, the wind, right, goes round and round, but it finds its course like our spirit. Good, deep flexion in the right hip and an extension through the left hip, bending the cliches through the right side. So 
the right side represented by reach out into the world. It's our relationships. So think about those impressions that we hold on to in the relationships that we have had in the past, in the present, and those that are yet to come. While the left side is very open and accepting. Yeah. So we're really getting a nice groin and hip and hip flexor. Psoas muscle opening. It's a very large muscle. It connects our spine to our legs. And in this dragon pose, it's very earthy. We're close to the earth. Taking the energy of Shakti, the liberating current of rising chi, to open the doors of knowledge in the earthly plane, to accept that. Right? And the earth channel is the stomach channel especially, and the spleen. So there's nourishment, right? There's digestion. How are you digesting this pose? Where can you soften? Hmm. I think I'll soften my fingers a bit here, right? What's opening? I'm noticing that my right knee is really coming forward here. I'm feeling more of an opening, softening of my shoulders, a release. How much more can you release in the pose? Where can you widen and expand in the pose? How can you digest the thoughts? Might be very active right now. quad and activate the stomach channel, inner seam, left leg, spleen, especially open, like the filtering of the blood to the body. Continuing to breathe, continuing to soften. Notice where you're gripping. And can you ease that sensation? Three more breaths. One more breath in, soften the breath out. As you inhale, begin to lengthen out through the right leg, tuck your left toes under, drag your blocks or your books with you, and just soften, just for a moment here. Soften your heart down, good. Now, as we inhale, we're going to rock back forward, rebending the right knee here. If we place a block inside that right foot, we're going to take the right hand, place it on the block, and have a little conversation between the right knee and the right elbow. Good. Lift the left knee off the earth. Rotate the left foot down into a warrior position. We're coming into our extended side angle. So this is a yang asana. We're going to float the left arm overhead. So here, you want to feel the outer right knee, outer right hip, plugging back and a pressing through the left pinky toe and out through the left fingertips. So this pose is really good to work the QL muscle here. And so that muscle tends to give a lot of people problems. I happen to be one of them, especially on my right side. So you may notice low back pain at times or a tightness feeling. And so this pose helps to lengthen the QL, which works its way from about the 12th rib into the iliac crest. Good, one more breath here. On your next in breath, let's lengthen the right thigh bone up and back and coming into an extended triangle, Uchicha Trigonasana. So again here, pull up, so we're getting very young here. Pull up on both kneecaps. So we're really getting the stomach channel activated here. Good. And the triad that is forming in this triangulation from both legs to the pubic symphysis is igniting fire chi. The fire builds the earth, the ash left behind. So it builds more soil for us to stand upon. Good. One more breath. And then as you exhale, we're going to go ahead and circle down that left arm and circle it back up. Good. Sweep it back over your head. And then as you come down to the second one, release. 
rotate onto the toes of the left foot. Move your block away. And you're going to step it right into your downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take your dog for a little walk here. Good. Long through the spine, sacrum through the crown of the head. One breath in. Release the breath out. Good. Let's go ahead and inhale through the plank. Exhale. If you want to pull Chaturanga, go ahead. Rise and pull the up dog. And exhale. Shift it back to your downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Beautiful. Flipping our gaze, we're going to go ahead and take the left foot through this time. And we're going to go ahead and soften down the right knee and the top of the right foot. Bring your blocks or your books back underneath your shoulders. Let's plug into our time. Let's take our dragon pose on this side. Good. So begin to soften the tops of the shoulders. And notice now this time the left hip crease is in deep flexion. So we're working through the cliches, thinning them through the left side. The left side is the heart side. And the heart side represents the connection first to self-knowledge. The invest and self-knowledge is not only didactic knowledge, but it is the exploration through our meditation process, self-discovery. And through that self-discovery, we find connection to our roots, our foundation, our heritage. Right? Basically, the heritage of humanity. And then from there, there is a building into noting what we are blessed with. Right? And to show gratitude for those blessings. Right? Simply maybe the roof over your head, the food on your table. So impressions that get stuck there can hold us back in those areas. And now the right side is in an extension. So we're opening the right side up. And as we open up the right side, what we've learned from the left, we can then truly understand our gifts and sources and reach out into the world and serve others better, effectively. All right? Continue to soften the breath. Continue to notice where you might be fidgeting and playing. Okay. Ah, soften. Soften the edges of your eyes. Soften the jaw. Notice where you can send the breath. Maybe see the breath as a gentle stream of water flowing racing areas that feel restricted and tense and tight. Continue soften it out. Continue let it go. A few more breaths here. Loosen your fingertips, loosen your hold. Four more breaths. Inhale through the exhale. Exhale. One more breath. Deep breath in. Soften the breath out. And gently begin to lengthen through the front leg. Tuck the right toes under. Sit the right hip onto the right heel. And just soften out for a breath. Mm. Good. And then gently rebend the left knee. I'm just going to sweep my body around so you can see me better. Good. So we're going to lift the right knee off the earth, right? Take your block inside the left foot. Rotate the right foot down 45. Right arm is going to rise up and sweep it overhead, elbow to ear. So think about the right hip externally rotating as the outer left knee, outer left hip moving back. Pull up on the right kneecap. Good. And notice the energy 
Start to drive in a long string with your breath on the right side of the body. Right? Softening through the right armpit. Heart meridian awakens. Moving through other challenges with ease and confidence. As you inhale, left thigh bone will move up and back. Trigonasana Uttita, through the extension. Good. One more breath here. And as you exhale, just circle that right arm down into the earth. Inhale, rise it up. Sweep it overhead. And then gently release the right hand down, softening the left knee. Move your block out and away. Step it back into your downward facing dog. Take your dog for a walk. Let's take one more flow here. Option. You can come for a full left foot on up, a full rising up dog, and a surrendering downward facing dog. Beautiful. Let's inhale to the front. And exhale, you're going to pass all the way through your chaturanga down onto your belly. So you could soften your knees if you need. Bring our timer with us. Good. And so down onto the belly, you're going to come up onto your forearms here into our Sphinx pose. So we're going to make sure that our elbows and shoulders are in alignment. You can spread your fingers wide. Good. So in this pose, you have an option to put a blanket over the pelvic area to soften, if you need be. If you feel there's too much in the lumbar spine of compression, the elbows can come forward of the shoulders. You can also have the option if, while in the pose, it becomes uncomfortable, unmanageable for the lumbar spine, to engage periodically the glutes, the inner thighs, and the lower abs. Good. So Sphinx pose here. Good. So this is going to bring vitality to the spine, flexibility to the spine. It is back bending. So it's a really nice asana to do if you feel you have low energy and you need a little pick me up. So back bends are very stimulating. So begin to sense the sternum getting a little bit longer and the tops of the shoulders surrendering here. Be aware that the glutes will have a natural tendency to begin to activate. And so with your breath, soften them. Begin to notice that the hands may also become quite active and soften them. Notice where the elbows and the forearms are and begin to soften them. The heart is lunging forward here. So it's a reminder to lead with your heart. Right? Lead with your heart space. The quality in the Greek elements for the heart is air. Right? And the air will fuel the flames of fire. And in Chinese medicine, the heart is fire. And so they work together. Right? And the earth is what the ash is a result of from the fire burning. And so the whole stomach meridian is being activated in this pose. Right? The front body compressing front of the legs, right, through the pelvis, and then there's a, a stretching right up through the chest and the gaze to the horizon. You need to soften your jaw. And just where the mind goes when the pose becomes a little challenging. And so the sphinx, very ancient, and it plugs into new knowledge, a new cycle of time. And see how everything becomes new, moving out of the old and into the new. Taking a few more breaths here. 
breath in and start a breath out gently coming on down release from the toes you can create a little pillow with your hands left cheek takes on and then begin to just wiggle waggle the hips from side to side and just allow the chi to soften there for a few breaths here let it go feel the front body Growing position here, melding into the flow of the earth. Just breath in. And soften the breath out. Good. On your next in-breath, come back up onto the forearms. And then take your hands and spin them out diagonally. And as you inhale, lengthen the arm bones. And we're coming into seal pose. So this is a deeper back bend. And if the lumbar spine is feeling very compressed, you have an option to open the feet, the width of your mat. You can also bring your hands a little bit more forward. Good. You can soften if you need it to, to place a blanket under the pelvic triangle. That also is an option here. Of course, if this becomes too much, you can engage the glutes. You can engage the lower abdomen, inner thighs. That will help protect the lumbar spine. So you need to be the judge. Follow the inner guru here. Of course, you can always come on down into sphinx pose. You can release the chin towards your heart and really open up the cervical spine here. Come into a state of internal consciousness. And again, this is bringing great vitality to the spine, the powerhouse, which is shown in and activating the stomach meridian. And you can also lift your gaze in this pose, continuing to soften the shoulders. This pose tends to be very challenging for my shoulders. I know in my training, I really hated being in this pose. <laughs> so it's a challenge for me. So I know my mind gets quite active in this pose. And so I need to restore it with the breath. And just pass the river mind and on my dosha and continue to soften. Good. And seal pose is also a reminder of our natural creative processes, our imagination. Ability to go with the flow as we create. Mm, breathing softly into the body, softening the armpits, the inner arms, softening the mind. Breathing in and breathing out. Where can we let go? Relax. Continue to soften a few more breaths here. You can flood the belly and the hands of the earth. Take a nice deep breath in. Soften the breath out. And gently come down onto the forearms first. And then sweep and make your hands pillow here. Maybe the right cheek will come down. We'll go waggle the hips from side to side. Breath in. And the breath is out. Placing your hands under your chest, tapping your toes, and just shift your hips towards your heels. Take one big, nice stretch here. Breath in. And the breath is out. Beautiful. Sit your hips down to the left here, spin around, and we're gonna work our way coming down onto our backs. Keep your blocks handy. And so soften prayer into the heart. Soften down one vertebra at a time. And we're all the way down into Pachimama. Breath in and the breath releases out here. Beautiful. 
So I'm going to get you into this next pose and then I'm going to come out so I can time you. We're going to come into half moon. So as we inhale, the arms are going to rise up overhead. Through the exhalation, the arms, the shoulders, the head will shift to your right. And then take your next breath and take your right leg and your left leg, shift it to the right. Take your right hand around your left wrist, pull your left shoulder down, and take your nose to point up towards the stars. Take your right ankle over your left. Good. So here you are in your half moon pose. And this is a beautiful posture here to open up the lateral movement of the spine, which we don't get to do very often, right? This also will activate the IT band down the left side, right? From the hip to the knee. This will also open up the intercostal muscles, right? It gives more space for the left side of the ribs to expand. Soften through the left armpit, heart meridian awakening, lung meridian beginning to awaken on the back side of the armpit, the obliques awakening. So here, see if you can take the breath and work it from the left sole of the foot up through the left side leg. Really awakening the gallbladder chi, the energy of wood, the digestive process in the body of the fat. And draw it all the way up from the left hip, left side of the rib cage. And let the chi just kind of dance in the left armpit, soften. Very close to the earth here. Opening the chi of the gallbladder and wood that grows strong this time of the year, springtime. In the shape of the crescent moon here, the waters, the moon activating the ebb and flow of the waves of the ocean, the ebb and flow fluids in our body, the ebb and flow of our emotions and our thoughts. Continuing to breathe, a few more breaths here. The QL muscles awaken, length, Fourth eye, back of the skull, to the right. Inhale, and exhale. Three more breaths here. Breath again. Breath. Take a deep breath in. Soften the breath out. The next breath, let's release the left wrist. The arms will float down towards your sides. Pull your head to the center. Release the right ankle over the left. Bend your knees, soles of the feet to the earth. Press away the earth. Lift your hips and settle them back down into the earth. Re-lengthening your legs out. And we'll take this pose to the opposite side here. So you can inhale, the arms will lengthen overhead. Exhale, shift your shoulders, your arms, your head to the left. On your next breath, take both legs, shift them over to your left. Take your left ankle over your right, your left hand around your right wrist, pull your right shoulder down, right hip down. Tip your nose to the center of the sky and breathe. Hmm. Perhaps noticing the difference between one side and the other. Just noticing. Becoming a witness to it. 
no judgment of it. And begin to draw the breath, the soul of the right foot, outer edge of the right leg. Softening to the top of the sacrum. Mouthing the ear cage. Softening the right armpit. Releasing that right shoulder. And see yourself bathing the periphery, the edges of your body. Noting that the river edge, the pet. Sometimes it becomes a little eroded. So in your mind's eye, when you nourish the right part of your body, and in nourishing the right side of the body, you nourish your relationship with others. You nourish your playful, childlike, energy, and you nourish your ability to serve others, and to reach out to those who carry the wisdom that you may not have yet, and make it on this side of the veil. Ease your jaw. Soften the corners of your eyes. Three more breaths here. Deep breath in. Soften the breath out. One more. Begin to release the breath out. On your next breath, release your right wrist. Float your arms down to your sides. Lift your head. Straighten your back out. Release the left ankle from the right. Bend your knees, soles of the feet to the earth. Lift your hips. Relax. Release. And then hug your knees into your chest. Gentle sacral rock from side to side. Mm. And let's just take one bridge pose. I'm going to give you the option here to either use a block for support or not. So option one, you can go ahead and take your block or your book and you can place it under the sacrum. You can place it at any height you would like. Option two, no block. On your in-breath, breath, you can press away the earth, rainbow the hips up. All right. If you're on your block, you can keep that sacrum on block. And if you're not with the block, you can either keep your palms down, and if you want a little bit more, you get a little bit more yang energy here, you can shimmy the shoulders. Press the aces of the hip points up. I'm going to come out of the pose so I can time you for a bit. Mm -hmm. And so you're building that bridge, right? From one point to the other. The sternum is long, the aces points, the hip points widening, the knees, the shins, and then the taller. You're embracing the earth with the backs of your shoulders. The fourth eye, embracing the wisdom of the earth through the back brain, subconscious mind. And breathing, soft, spanking. With each breath, knowing where you can soften, surrender, release. Mm-hmm. 
dissolve yourself into a state of stillness. So in the bridge, it is a reminder there is no beginning and no end. Right? Things simply transform. You can look at the bridge as a way to bridge two parts into one. So releasing the concept of duality into the concept of unity. A few more breaths here. Beautiful. And so if you're on your block, you'll remove your block. And one vertebra at a time, you're going to release and scalp. Let's go ahead and draw the knees into the chest. And taking our pose of stirrup pose or happy baby pose, Ananda Balasana. And the outer edges of the feet are being held. And the knees are drawing down towards the earth. In the sacrum, surrendering, low back surrendering. Let's just anchor in here and invite gravity. We come out of the pose and just invite gravity to release those knees closer to the earth's face. Instead of rocking in this pose, just allow the whole base of your being to settle down into the earth. Right? A total retreat, a surrender and a release. And we're just going to hold this pose for a little bit of time, not a full three minutes. I put my timer away. And I just really want you to feel the essence of the parts of your body that are in connection to the earth and the parts that are open to the pure energy or the quantum field of pure potentiality above. And so feel that blending of the two. Yeah? And then notice how those different parts of your body feel. The areas that are very supported in the earth Right? And the humbling essence of the feet opening, right? The soles of the feet towards the pure energy above. So just a few more breaths there. And join you back into that pose. Two more breaths. And then gently as you release the outer edges of your feet, we're going to lengthen the right leg into the earth and the left. Okay. Widen the feet, the width of your mat, and invite your feet to move out east to west. And then plug the left shoulder blade down under into the earth and then the right. So you're expanding up through the chest, lengthening through the sternum, widening through the clavicles, the backs of the arms, so the lower meridian begins to open, the palms open freely, and just begin to rock your head from side to side until it finds its natural center position in your final pose of Shavasana. So experience the sound of the wind chimes. Remember the trigram of Shun, or the energy of the wind. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning to its course. 
Head meets the head, the head is heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy are the shoulders, the shoulders are heavy. Heavy, heavy are the arms, the arms are heavy. Heavy, heavy is the chest, chest is heavy. Heavy, heavy are the hips, the hips are heavy. And heavy, heavy are the legs, legs are heavy. Out of the earth is the spirit, the lightness of the spirit, lightness of the head, lightness of the shoulders, lightness of the arms, lightness of the chest. Because they're so light of the hips the legs, and so light is the mind. Can we learn from the energy of wind? We learn how to let go and be free. The wind does not resist, but rather it is free in spirit. We can learn to rely on our intuition. This is the voice of the higher self, the sage, the seer, and the impeccable world. When we listen to the higher self, and use the word impeccably, then we experience heaven on earth. We can learn to become the dream of the creator, the initiator in life. This is the freedom within that stirs our natural talents and souls up. We can learn to lose routine and go with the flow. The wind is changeable. No two days are the same for the spirit of the wind. When we stick to a daily routine, we stop growing and become stagnant and lose our interest in life. So let go of routine and try something new for a change. Then we can learn to be subtle and a rebel. Wind is spirit, is unpredictable. Strong as a storm one day, yet meek as a mouse the next. And it knows itself and is comfortable with self. The two should become unpredictable. Know what we stand for, even if it means to be a rebel. And so be it. Begin to deepen your breath. To deepen the spaces of your mind and your body. Invite the energy around the head, gently rocking it side to side. Let it shift down the arms and into the palms of your hands and dance in your fingers with gentle movement. Let it span the width of your hips and ease down your legs and tickle your toes. As you inhale, raising the arms overhead, and as you exhale, draw the knees into your chest. Wrapping your arms around your knees, gently roll over to your right side. A state of knowing, a state of being. And when you feel ready, press away the soil of the earth and come into your pose of ease to coffee. Put our hands over the heart space and have the chakra behind your head. So God, some stuff, so you can know volunteer and all beings be free and at peace. And may our thoughts, words, and actions contribute to that freedom and to that peace. Seal our practice with the sound of Om. Seal our intention with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Thank you for practicing with me. 
you read from my third book, Mother Nature Bridge to Conscious Living, which is available on Amazon or my website, www.franchoyogamj.com. Thank you.